In one of the small towns of Palestine, hidden among the high hills and fertile valleys, lived a girl named Mary. Her life was indistinguishable from that of other girls her age. She did household chores, helped her parents, and prepared for her upcoming marriage to Joseph, a quiet and respected carpenter. But one day, when the first stars began to twinkle in the twilight sky, everything changed. That night, when Mary was praying alone in her small room, the space around her was suddenly filled with an indescribable light. She looked up and saw the angel Gabriel in front of her, whose face shone brighter than the daytime sun. The girl's heart froze with fear, but the angelic presence soon filled her soul with incredible peace. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with the Lord, Gabriel began, and his voice sounded like a distant but warm wind. Behold, you will conceive and bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Maria listened, barely catching her breath. She knew stories from the Holy Scriptures where angels appeared to prophets and righteous people, but she could never imagine that she herself would become a participant in such a miraculous event. However, her first question was full of sincere bewilderment. How will it be, angel of the Lord, because I don't know my husband? Gabriel smiled, seeing the sincerity and purity of her heart, and answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the holy thing that is born will be called the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, also conceived a son in her old age. And this month is the sixth for her, which is called barren. For with God no word will be impossible. With these words, the angel disappeared, leaving Mary alone in the flickering light of the stars. Hope and endless faith arose in her heart. She realized that her life would now change forever and that she would become part of God's great plan. Several months passed after the visit of the angel Gabriel, and Mary, being pregnant, moved to live with Joseph. Despite all the amazing events, life continued to take its course. At this time, in the Roman Empire to which Judea belonged, a decree was issued by Emperor Augustus on a population census. Each resident was required to travel to their hometown to register. Joseph, being a descendant of King David, had to go to Bethlehem. Maria, despite her position, insisted on accompanying him. The path was long and difficult, but Mary's faith and inner peace helped her cope with difficulties. Arriving in Bethlehem, they were faced with a new problem. The city was crowded with people who had arrived for the census, and there was not a single free room in the hotels. After a long search, they were offered shelter in a modest cave used by shepherds as a stable for their livestock. At night, Maria felt that the time for childbirth had come. In this quiet and modest cave, surrounded by animals, she gave birth to a son. Joseph, full of care and trepidation, helped her as best he could. He brought clean straw to make a sort of bed for the baby and found an old cattle feeder to use as a manger. Mary took the newborn Jesus in her arms. Her heart overflowed with joy and peace. The baby's eyes shone with an extraordinary light that seemed to come from within. Mary wrapped him in clean swaddling clothes and put him in the manger. At that moment, despite the modest and even poor conditions, she felt like the happiest woman on earth. Shortly after the birth of Jesus, shepherds came to the cave. An angel appeared to them and announced the birth of the Savior. The shepherds told Mary and Joseph how suddenly the heavens were filled with light and angelic voices singing, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Maria listened to their stories with reverence and awe, keeping all these words in her heart. She understood that her son was not just a baby, but the long-awaited Messiah about whom generations had prophesied. This night was the beginning of a great story that will change the world.
Over the next days, wise men from the east began to arrive in Bethlehem, following the star that led them to the birthplace of Jesus. They brought gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These gifts symbolized the royal greatness, divinity, and future suffering of the baby. Mary, although she did not fully understand the full significance of these events, became more and more aware every day that her son was destined for a great mission. She felt that her life, despite all the trials, was filled with deep meaning and a higher purpose. Joseph protected and supported her as best he could, being a firm and reliable companion along this path. Thus began the life of Jesus, the Son of God, in humble circumstances, but with a great destiny that the whole world would talk about. Peaceful existence in Bethlehem did not seem to last long. The day after the visit of the Magi, when the silence of the night enveloped the city, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. His face was illuminated by heavenly light, and his voice sounded like the distant roar of thunder. Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, because Herod is looking for the baby to destroy him, said the angel. With these words, the angel disappeared, leaving Joseph in anxious thoughts. Without wasting any time, Joseph woke up Mary. Her face, despite fatigue and recent childbirth, shone with calmness and determination. She understood that now the fate of her son was in their hands and was ready to follow her husband anywhere just to save him. Having collected the most necessary things, Mary and Joseph left Bethlehem under the cover of darkness. Joseph, holding the baby Jesus, led a donkey on which Mary sat. Their journey was long and dangerous. Dark mountain paths, endless sand dunes and unknown dangers lurked at every step. But despite this, they moved forward, relying on God's protection. Days turned into weeks. Mary and Joseph experienced a lot. Cold nights in the desert, hunger and thirst, but their faith remained unshakable. Eventually, they reached the borders of Egypt, where they found temporary refuge among the community of Jews living there. Life in Egypt was different, but Mary found comfort in knowing that her son was safe. She watched Jesus grow, and every day new and amazing qualities appeared in him. His eyes, full of wisdom and kindness, often seemed older than his age. Sometimes when Mary looked at him, it seemed to her that she saw a reflection of God's will and wisdom. Mary and Joseph established a simple but stable life. Joseph worked as best he could, providing for his family, and Mary took care of the house and raising her son. They found support among local residents who respected and supported them. Several years passed, and the angel again appeared to Joseph in a dream. Arise, take the child and his mother, and return to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's soul are dead, he said. Joseph woke up and shared the news with Mary. Their hearts were filled with joy and relief. Finally, they could return to their homeland. The path back was no less difficult, but now they walked with the hope of a new life. Upon returning to Israel, they learned that Herod's son, Archelaus, was reigning in Judea and decided to settle in Galilee, in the city of Nazareth. Here, among familiar and familiar places, Mary and Joseph hoped to begin a new chapter in their lives. Nazareth became their home. Maria again felt calm and peaceful as she watched her son grow and develop. The town's residents soon got used to the new family and accepted them into their community. Jesus grew up surrounded by love and care, and Mary felt that her son was destined for great things. As time passed, Jesus, surrounded by the love and support of his parents, grew into a wise and compassionate young man. Mary kept all these memories in her heart, realizing that her son was not just a child but the Son of God, whose destiny was just beginning to be revealed to the world. Thus ended their long and difficult journey, full of dangers and trials. But ahead of them, new challenges and achievements awaited them, which would forever change the course of history. Life in Nazareth went on as usual. Jesus grew up surrounded by the love and care of Mary and Joseph. 
He was an obedient child, helping his father in the carpentry shop and studying with local rabbis. But every year Maria noticed something unusual in him, something that distinguished him from other children. These mysterious signs were like small fragments of the future that added up to the picture of her son's great destiny. One of the first such signs occurred when Jesus was only seven years old. One day he was playing with other children on the outskirts of Nazareth. Suddenly, a strong storm began, and the children ran to hide. Jesus, on the other hand, stood calmly and looked at the sky. Around him, the storm seemed to be losing its strength. The wind died down and the rain stopped pouring. Maria, watching this from the window of the house, realized that her son had an unusual power, although she herself was not yet fully aware of its nature. Another important event was the Passover celebration in Jerusalem, when Jesus turned 12 years old. Mary and Joseph took him with them as they did every year. After the holiday, they went back to Nazareth in a large caravan group. After traveling a day, they discovered that Jesus had disappeared. They returned to Jerusalem in alarm and searched for him among relatives and friends for three days. On the third day, they found Jesus in the temple, sitting among the teachers and scribes, talking with them. Everyone who heard him marveled at his intelligence and answers. Maria, seeing this, was both proud and worried. She asked him, My child, why did you do this to us? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you with great sorrow. Jesus answered her, Why did you look for me? Did you not know that I must be involved in the things that belong to my father? Maria was surprised by these words, but did not fully understand their meaning. However, she kept these words in her heart, feeling that they carried a deeper meaning that would be revealed over time. Mary also noticed that Jesus often retired to prayer. He climbed the hills and spent time there thinking and talking with God. One day, when Jesus returned from one of these retreats, Mary asked him what he had prayed for. Jesus answered with a gentle smile, I am speaking to my Father in heaven. He teaches me and guides my paths. Over the years, Mary began to notice that Jesus showed unusual wisdom and compassion. He always helped those in need, cared for the sick and weak. One day he healed an old man who had been paralyzed for many years. Maria saw her son put his hands on the old man and quietly say a prayer. The old man stood up and began to walk, praising God. This event shocked everyone who witnessed it, but Mary saw it as yet another confirmation of her son's divine destiny. Despite all these signs, Mary remained humble and patient. She understood that her son was different from everyone else, and her task was to support and protect him. Every day she prayed for him, asking God for wisdom and strength so that Jesus could fulfill his destiny. Thus, the lives of Mary and Jesus in Nazareth were filled with amazing and mysterious events that prepared them for the great trials and achievements that lay ahead. Mary kept all these signs in her heart, realizing that her son carried the light and love of God that would change the world. As the years passed, Jesus grew, becoming increasingly aware of his divine destiny. He continued to live in Nazareth, helping Joseph in the carpentry shop and caring for his mother. Despite his humble existence, events took place in his life that left a deep mark in the hearts of those who were around him. One of these significant events was the first miracle that Jesus performed at a wedding in Cana in Galilee. This story was a milestone not only for Jesus himself, but also for Mary, who saw her son begin to discover his divine destiny. Mary was invited to the wedding along with Jesus and his disciples. The wedding was noisy and fun, as is customary among Jews with many guests and an abundance of treats. However, a problem soon arose. The wine, so necessary for the celebration, had run out. This could be a great shame for the owners. Mary, noticing this, approached Jesus and quietly said to him, They have no wine. She knew that her son was capable of helping, although he had not performed public miracles until that moment. Jesus, understanding his mother's hint, answered her, 
What is it to me and to you, wife? My hour has not yet come. Despite these words, Mary turned to the servants with confidence and said, Whatever he tells you, do it. The servants approached Jesus, awaiting his instructions. Jesus noticed six stone water pots standing nearby that were used for ritual washing. He told the servants, Fill the water pots with water. The servants filled the water pots to the brim. Then Jesus said to them, Now take some and bring it to the master of the feast. The servants, without asking questions, did as he said. When the master of the feast tried what was brought, he was surprised. The water turned into wine, and the wine was of such good quality that he, calling the groom, said, Every person first serves good wine, and when they get drunk, then the worst, and you have saved good wine until now. The guests at the feast did not know what had happened, but the servants and disciples of Jesus witnessed this miracle. This event made a strong impression on everyone, especially on the disciples, who began to believe in his divine mission. Maria, seeing this, felt pride and joy. She understood that her son had begun a path that would lead him to great achievements. This first miracle at Cana was not only a manifestation of Jesus' divine power, but also a symbol of his mission. Turning water into wine symbolized the renewal and transformation that Jesus would bring to the world. Mary, realizing this, continued to pray for her son, supporting him on the path that was ordained by God. Mary also saw how this event changed the perception of Jesus among his disciples and followers. They began to see in him not just a teacher, but also the true Son of God, capable of performing miracles. This strengthened their faith and inspired them to follow him. In subsequent years, Jesus performed many miracles and sermons, but the first miracle at the wedding in Cana of Galilee forever remained in the memory of Mary as the beginning of the great journey of her son. She knew that great trials and accomplishments lay ahead, but her faith and love for Jesus were unshakable. This event thus became an important milestone in the lives of Mary and Jesus, symbolizing the beginning of his public ministry and divine mission that would change the world. After the miracle at the wedding in Cana in Galilee, Jesus began to actively preach and teach the people. His words and actions attracted more and more followers. Mary watched her son spread his teachings and saw how his words touched the hearts of people, changing their lives. It was a time of pride for her, but also a time of anxiety, because she realized that as Jesus' popularity increased, so did the dangers that threatened him. Jesus traveled through Galilee, Samaria, and Judea, preaching in synagogues, on hills, and by lakes. His teachings concerned love, mercy, forgiveness, and the kingdom of God. One of his most famous and profound teachings was the Sermon on the Mount, which took place on the slopes of a mountain near Lake Gennesaret. Mary was present at many of these sermons. She saw people gathering to hear her son. They brought the sick and infirm with them, hoping for healing. Jesus never refused to help anyone, showing incredible compassion and care. One day, when Mary was walking to the place where Jesus was teaching the people, she heard him say, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. These words penetrated the hearts of people, giving them hope and comfort. Maria saw how people's faces lit up with light, how they began to believe in a better future. She understood that her son not only taught, but also changed the very essence of the human soul. One day, Jesus, along with his disciples, went to a small village on the outskirts of Galilee. Maria went with them. On the way, they met a woman who had been bleeding for many years. She made her way through the crowd and touched Jesus' robe, 
believing it would heal her. Jesus stopped and said, Who touched me? The disciples, surprised by his question, replied that the crowd was pressing him from all sides. But Jesus insisted, Someone touched me because I felt that power had gone out of me. The woman trembling came forward and confessed her action. Jesus, with gentleness and compassion, said to her, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Maria witnessed this miracle and saw how people's faith in her son grew every day. Mary also noticed how Jesus taught his disciples, preparing them for their mission. He told them parables, explaining the nature of the kingdom of God, and showing them examples of service and love. One such parable was the parable of the Good Samaritan, in which Jesus taught about mercy and compassion. Mary watched as her son spent time in prayer, retreating to the hills and gardens. He often prayed for his students and for everyone who came to him for help. She saw how he drew strength from communication with the Heavenly Father, and this gave her comfort. As Jesus' popularity grew, Mary realized that his teachings and miracles were attracting not only admiration, but also envy and hostility from religious leaders. She saw how the Pharisees and Sadducees tried to trap her son in words, asking him treacherous questions, but Jesus always answered with wisdom and confidence. Mary prayed for her son every day, asking God for protection and wisdom for him. She knew that difficult times lay ahead, but her faith remained unshaken. She believed that her son would fulfill his divine destiny and bring the light and love of God into the world. Thus, Mary's life continued filled with pride and anxiety for her son. She saw how Jesus changed people's lives, healed their bodies and souls, and understood that his mission was just beginning. A great test lay ahead of them, which would change not only their lives, but the whole world. Mary knew that her son's mission would inevitably bring him into conflict with the authorities and religious leaders, but she could not foresee the terrible trials that would befall him. As she watched Jesus perform miracles and preach, she felt pride, but also a growing anxiety. Her anxiety grew as rumors of his arrest and trial began to spread throughout Jerusalem. During the Passover, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem, the city was filled with people who had come to celebrate, and they greeted him like a king, waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! But Maria knew that behind this joyful reception was hidden the shadow of impending disaster. In the evening, Jesus and his disciples gathered for the Last Supper. Mary, who was not present, learned from the disciples about the events of that night. Jesus took the bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup of wine and said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. These words became prophetic, foreshadowing the suffering and death that lay ahead of him. After the supper, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. There, in the stillness of the night, he experienced deep agony, foreseeing his suffering. He prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, however, not as I want, but as you want. His sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. At this point he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples who brought guards to arrest him. Mary learned of Jesus' arrest at dawn. Her heart was filled with horror and pain, but she could not stay away. Together with the other women who followed Jesus, she went to the place where he was judged. He was brought before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor who, despite his doubts, was forced to satisfy the demands of the crowd and sentence Jesus to crucifixion. The path to Golgotha, where Jesus was to be crucified, was filled with suffering. Mary followed her son, seeing how he was scourged and humiliated, how he carried a heavy cross on his tormented shoulders. Her heart was breaking with pain, but she remained close, trying to support him with her presence. When Jesus fell under the weight of the cross, the Roman soldiers forced Simon of Cyrene to help him carry the cross. Mary saw her son, 
exhausted and exhausted, get up and continue on his way. Her eyes were full of tears, but she could not take her mind off him, even when he was nailed to the cross at the top of Golgotha. The soldiers raised the cross, and Jesus was crucified between two thieves. The crowd mocked and mocked him, but Jesus, despite his suffering, prayed, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. These words awakened in Mary even greater pain, but also deep pride for her son, who, even at the moment of greatest suffering, showed divine mercy. At one o'clock in the afternoon, darkness came and lasted until three o'clock in the afternoon. Mary stood at the foot of the cross with John, Jesus' beloved disciple and other women. She watched her son slowly die and could do nothing to help. Jesus, seeing his mother and John nearby, said, Woman, behold your son. And he said to John, Behold your mother. From that moment on, John took Mary to him, caring for her as his mother. Finally, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. His head fell and he gave up the ghost. The earth shook and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Mary, standing at the cross, felt her heart breaking with grief. Her son, her flesh and blood, fulfilled his mission sacrificing himself to save humanity. After the death of Jesus, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, the secret disciples, took his body down from the cross and placed it in a tomb hewn out of the rock. Mary and the other women watched as the tomb was sealed with a stone. Her soul was filled with pain and devastation, but she did not lose faith. She knew that her son was more than just a man, and that his death had a deeper meaning that would be revealed later. Mary returned to John, her new son, and continued to pray and hope. She believed that her son would defeat death and fulfill his promise. There was hope in her heart that this was not the end, but the beginning of a new path that would bring light and salvation to the whole world. The Passion of Christ was the culmination of the lives of Jesus and Mary, demonstrating their unwavering faith, love, and devotion to God. Mary, who lost her son but did not lose her faith, remained a symbol of strength and hope for all who knew her and followed her son. A great miracle lay ahead of them, a resurrection that would change their lives and the whole world forever. The next morning after the Sabbath, Sunday at dawn, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary and Salome went to the tomb of Jesus to anoint his body with perfume, as required by Jewish customs. Their hearts were full of sadness, and each of them could not hold back her tears, remembering the suffering and death of Jesus. They walked in silence, knowing that on the way to the tomb, a huge stone was waiting for them, with which the entrance was sealed. When the women approached the tomb, they were greeted by an amazing sight. The stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. In fear and trembling, they went inside and saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. The angel told them, Do not be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth crucified. He is risen. He is not here. This is the place where it was laid. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he told you. The women overwhelmed with fear and joy, ran to tell the students about what they had seen. Mary, the mother of Jesus, learned about the miraculous event from John and the other disciples. Her heart was filled with hope and faith. She understood that her son had fulfilled his promise and defeated death. Her grief gave way to joy and anxious anticipation of meeting the risen Jesus. That same night, the disciples gathered in one house, the doors of which were locked for fear of the Jews. Mary was among them, praying and waiting. Suddenly Jesus appeared among them, saying, Peace be with you. The disciples were amazed and full of joy to see their teacher alive. Jesus showed them his wounds on his arms and side, confirming that it was indeed him. Maria, seeing her son, experienced incredible relief and happiness. Her faith was rewarded, 
and she knew that his resurrection was a sign of a new beginning for all humanity. Over the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples several times. He taught them, prepared them for their mission, and strengthened their faith. Mary was present at these meetings, listened to his words, and saw how he prepared his followers for the great task of spreading the gospel. Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, the power of the Holy Spirit that would come upon them, and the need to go and teach all nations. Maria watched her son guide his students with love and care and felt deep pride in him. She saw how his words and actions strengthened their spirits and prepared them for future challenges. Jesus spoke of love and forgiveness, mercy and compassion, setting an example for his followers. One of the most significant moments was the ascension of Jesus. On the fortieth day after the resurrection, he gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olives. Mary was among them, standing next to John. Jesus raised his hands and blessed them. Then, as they watched, he began to rise into the sky, and a cloud took him out of their sight. The disciples, including Mary, stood in amazement, looking up at the sky. Suddenly, two angels in white robes appeared and said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing and looking at heaven? This Jesus, who ascended from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him ascend into heaven. These words strengthened the faith and hope of the disciples. Mary knew that her son would always be with them, and that his mission continued through them. After the ascension of Jesus, Mary and the disciples returned to Jerusalem. They gathered in one upper room, where they unanimously remained in prayer and awaiting the promised Holy Spirit. Mary, like the others, prayed and prepared to continue the work of her son. Her faith and devotion were an example for everyone around her. Pentecost, the day when the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples, was the culmination of this time. Mary was among those who received the gift of the Spirit, and she saw how her son, despite his physical absence, continued to work through his followers. They began to speak in different languages, preaching about the great work of Jesus Christ. Mary's life after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus was filled with joy and confidence that her son had fulfilled his destiny and brought salvation to the whole world. Her faith was unshakable, and she continued to support her students, praying and inspiring them to great service. In her heart there lived the confidence that her son was always with her and with everyone who believed in his teachings. After his resurrection, Jesus remained with his disciples for forty days, continuing to teach them and strengthen them in their faith. It was a time full of joy and amazing revelations. Maria, seeing her son alive again, felt indescribable happiness and pride. She knew that his mission continued and that many great things were yet to come. One day, on the fortieth day after the resurrection, Jesus gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olives, not far from Jerusalem. This place was special to all of them, and it became the last stop of Jesus' earthly stay. Mary, along with John and the other disciples, stood next to him, waiting for his words. Jesus raised his hands and blessed his followers. He told them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These words sank deeply into the hearts of the disciples and Mary, they understood that their task now was to continue the work of Jesus, to bring his teaching to the world. Jesus promised them the Holy Spirit, who would come upon them and give them strength to complete this mission. After these words, Jesus began to ascend into the sky. The disciples and Maria stood looking at him, not believing their eyes. He rose higher and higher until a cloud hid him from their sight. The hearts of all those present were filled with awe and awe. Suddenly, two angels in white robes appeared next to them and said, Men of Galilee, 
Why are you standing and looking at heaven? This Jesus, who ascended from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him ascend into heaven. These words strengthened the faith of the disciples and Mary. They knew that Jesus would return and that his presence would be with them always through the Holy Spirit. They returned to Jerusalem, filled with joy and determination to fulfill everything that was entrusted to them. In the following days, Mary and the disciples were in prayer and waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. They gathered in the upper room where they prayed with one accord and discussed the words and deeds of Jesus. Mary, being the mother of Jesus, played an important role in this community. Her faith and devotion inspired everyone around her. She encouraged the disciples by sharing with them her memories of the life and teachings of Jesus. Maria, seeing this, felt deep joy and gratitude in her heart. She knew that this was the fulfillment of Jesus' promise and that the disciples would now gain strength and wisdom to fulfill their mission. This day marked the beginning of a new stage in the life of the early Christian community. The disciples, filled with the Holy Spirit, began to preach about the great works of God. People from different nations who came to Jerusalem for the holiday were surprised to hear their native languages. The Apostle Peter stood up and, inspired by the Spirit, began to preach about the resurrection and salvation through Jesus Christ. About 3,000 people joined the community that day. Mary continued her life among the disciples, praying and supporting them. Her faith was unshakable and she saw her son's words come true. She knew that his teaching and sacrifice were not in vain and that his mission continues through his followers. The ascension of Jesus was the culmination of his earthly life and the beginning of a new stage in the history of Christianity. For Mary, this was a time of profound change and awareness of the great destiny of her son. She continued to live in faith, love, and hope, inspiring and supporting all around her to fulfill Jesus' great commission. After his resurrection, Jesus remained with his disciples for 40 days, continuing to teach them and strengthen them in their faith. It was a time full of joy and amazing revelations. Maria, seeing her son alive again, felt indescribable happiness and pride. She knew that his mission continued and that many great things were yet to come. One day, on the fortieth day after the resurrection, Jesus gathered his disciples on the Mount of Olives, not far from Jerusalem. This place was special to all of them, and it became the last stop of Jesus' earthly stay. Mary, along with John and the other disciples, stood next to him, waiting for his words. Jesus raised his hands and blessed his followers. He told them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These words sank deeply into the hearts of the disciples and Mary. They understood that their task now was to continue the work of Jesus, to bring his teaching to the world. Jesus promised them the Holy Spirit, who would come upon them and give them strength to complete this mission. After these words, Jesus began to ascend into the sky. The disciples and Maria stood looking at him, not believing their eyes. He rose higher and higher until a cloud hid him from their sight. The hearts of all those present were filled with awe and awe. Suddenly, two angels in white robes appeared next to them and said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing and looking at heaven? This Jesus, who ascended from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him ascend into heaven. These words strengthened the faith of the disciples and Mary. They knew that Jesus would return and that his presence would be with them always through the Holy Spirit. They returned to Jerusalem, filled with joy and determination to fulfill everything that was entrusted to them. In the following days, Mary and the disciples were in prayer and waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. They gathered in the upper room 
where they prayed with one accord and discussed the words and deeds of Jesus. Mary, being the mother of Jesus, played an important role in this community. Her faith and devotion inspired everyone around her. She encouraged the disciples by sharing with them her memories of the life and teachings of Jesus. Ten days after the Ascension, the Feast of Pentecost arrived. It was an important Jewish holiday, but for the disciples and Mary, it became a day of great revelation. Suddenly they heard a noise, as if from a rushing strong wind, and it filled the whole house where they were. Tongues like fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Maria, seeing this, felt deep joy and gratitude in her heart. She knew that this was the fulfillment of Jesus' promise and that the disciples would now gain strength and wisdom to fulfill their mission. This day marked the beginning of a new stage in the life of the early Christian community. The disciples, filled with the Holy Spirit, began to preach about the great works of God. People from different nations who came to Jerusalem for the holiday were surprised to hear their native languages. The Apostle Peter stood up and, inspired by the Spirit, began to preach about the resurrection and salvation through Jesus Christ. About 3,000 people joined the community that day. Mary continued her life among the disciples, praying and supporting them. Her faith was unshakable, and she saw her son's words come true. She knew that his teaching and sacrifice were not in vain, and that his mission continues through his followers. The ascension of Jesus was the culmination of his earthly life, and the beginning of a new stage in the history of Christianity. For Mary, this was a time of profound change and awareness of the great destiny of her son. She continued to live in faith, love, and hope, inspiring and supporting all around her to fulfill Jesus' great commission. After the ascension of Jesus, the life of Mary and his disciples entered a new stage. They continued to remain in Jerusalem, observing the teachings of Jesus and following his commandments. Mary continued to play an important role in the community, supporting the students and inspiring them with her faith and wisdom. Maria often recalled the words and deeds of her son, sharing these memories with her students. Her stories of Jesus' childhood, teachings, and miracles became an important part of the formation of the early Christian community. The disciples, listening to her, strengthened their faith and found strength for preaching and service. One day, while Mary was sitting in the upper room with John and other women, Peter and John approached her. They told her that the community was growing and more people were joining them. But along with this, difficulties also grow. Religious leaders and Roman authorities increasingly show hostility towards the followers of Jesus. Mary, having listened to them, replied, Do not be afraid. Our Lord promised us His help and protection, pray and remain faithful to his teachings. He is always with us, even if we don't see him physically. Peter and John, inspired by her words, returned to their work, continuing to preach and train new followers. Meanwhile, Mary continued to pray and support the community. She knew that her role now was to be a symbol of faith and hope for all who believed in her son. Shortly after Pentecost, more difficulties began to come upon the disciples. Stephen, one of the seven deacons, was arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin. He was accused of blasphemy and boldly testified to his faith in Jesus Christ. This angered the religious leaders and Stephen was stoned. This was the first martyrdom in the Christian community. Mary, upon learning of Stephen's death, was deeply saddened, but her faith remained unshakable. She knew her son had warned of such trials and prayed for strength and perseverance for all believers. Persecution intensified, and many disciples were forced to leave Jerusalem and disperse to different cities and countries preaching the gospel. But Mary and several of her closest disciples remained in Jerusalem, supporting those who could not leave. She saw her son's faith spread throughout the world, and it gave her comfort and joy. One of the most important events was the conversion of Saul, the famous persecutor of Christians. One day, 
While he was on his way to Damascus to arrest the followers of Jesus, Jesus himself appeared to him. The light blinded Saul, and he fell to the ground. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus asked. Who are you, Lord? Saul answered. I am Jesus, whom you persecute. It's hard for you to go against the grain. Saul was blinded and spent three days in blindness, praying and fasting. Then Ananias, one of the disciples, came to him, and through prayer, Saul received his sight and was baptized, becoming Paul, a zealous preacher of Christianity. Mary learned about this miracle and saw in it a sign that her son continued to act in the world, converting the hearts of even the most bitter enemies. She prayed for Paul and all who accepted faith in Jesus, knowing that their mission was becoming increasingly important and dangerous. Years passed, and Mary, living in Jerusalem, watched the Christian community grow and strengthen. She saw her son fulfill his promise to be with them until the end of time. Her faith and devotion became an example for all believers, and her wisdom helped many find the path to God. Mary also maintained connections with other communities founded by Jesus' disciples. She wrote letters and received messengers, sharing her knowledge and experience. Her words and teachings inspired many hearts and helped spread the light of faith throughout the world. In her life after the ascension of Jesus, Mary continued to be a beacon of faith, hope, and love to all who knew her and followed her son. Her life was dedicated to service and prayer, and she remained faithful to her mission until the end of her days, knowing that her son had fulfilled his destiny and brought salvation to all mankind. Over the years, Mary grew older, but her faith and devotion to the cause of Jesus remained as strong as in the days of his earthly life. Her life was full of prayer and care for the early Christian community, which continued to grow and strengthen. She lived with John, Jesus' beloved disciple in Jerusalem, where their home became a place of comfort and support for many believers. Mary often reflected on the past, remembering the miracles and teachings of her son, his suffering and resurrection. She knew that her life was also coming to an end, and she prepared for this with peace in her soul. She spent more and more time in prayer, asking God for strength and wisdom for her loved ones and the entire Christian community. One of the significant events of those days was the visit of Mary by Peter and the other apostles. They came to see her and receive her blessing. Peter, seeing her condition, said, Mary, you were our mother and mentor. Your presence and wisdom always inspired us. We have come to be with you at this time and to pray for you. Maria, smiling, replied, My dear children, your love and faith warm my heart. Seeing you continue my son's legacy brings me joy and peace. Pray for me, as I always pray for you. One day, when Maria was sitting by the window and looking at the setting sun, she felt an extraordinary peace and light enveloping her. She knew her time was approaching. She called John and said, Dear John, my heart is full of gratitude for all the years I spent with you. I am ready to meet my son and our Lord. Please call everyone so we can pray together. John, holding back his tears, went out and gathered everyone who was nearby. They all gathered around Maria, and she, despite her weakness, smiled at them, radiating love and peace. They began to pray together, and Mary said, Heavenly Father, I thank you for all the blessings, for my life and for my Son, Jesus Christ. Take me into your arms and grant me peace. At that moment, Maria felt her soul filled with light and warmth. She closed her eyes and, surrounded by the prayers and love of her loved ones, peacefully departed to be with the Lord. Everyone who was with her at that moment felt extraordinary calm and confidence that Mary had gone to her Son in heaven. After her death, the apostles and believers respectfully prepared her body for burial. Peter and John, along with other disciples, carried her body to the tomb. They prayed and sang hymns as they remembered her life and her invaluable contributions to their faith. Mary was buried in a cave, and a stone was placed on her tomb. Believers continued to come to her tomb, praying and remembering her. 
Soon after her funeral, rumors began about miracles associated with her name. People who came to her tomb with prayers reported healings and extraordinary phenomena. One of these miracles was when the apostles returned to the tomb a few days after the funeral to pay homage to Mary. They found the tomb empty, and Mary's body had disappeared. In this place, there were only fragrant flowers and a glowing light that did not fade away. The apostles and believers understood that Mary was taken into heaven to be with her Son and the Lord. These events strengthened the faith of the Christian community and became a symbol of hope and salvation. Mary, with her life and death, left a deep mark on the hearts of all believers. Her love, faith, and wisdom continued to inspire generations, and her example became the ideal for Christian living. Mary's last days were filled with peace and gratitude, and her passage into eternal life was further evidence of the greatness of God's plan. Her life and death became an integral part of the history of Christianity, symbolizing eternal love and devotion to God. Mary, feeling her end approaching, spent more and more time in prayer and meditation. In her heart lived deep faith and readiness to meet God, but every day her consciousness was filled with unusual visions, which she perceived as signs from above. These visions brought her comfort and assurance that her passage to eternal life would be blessed. One night, while Mary was praying in her room, a bright light enveloped her. She looked up and saw an angel standing in front of her. His face shone with unearthly beauty, and his wings emitted a soft light. The angel said, Mary, blessed are you among women. Your faith and devotion have always been an example for all believers. The Lord is ready to accept you into his arms, and you will see your son again. Mary, feeling extraordinary calm, answered, Am I ready to leave this world and meet the Lord? I pray to God that he will accept me into his eternal glory. The angel smiled softly and said, Your faith and love have always been with you, and they will lead you to God. Accept this time with gratitude and peace, for your soul is ready for eternal life. With these words, the angel disappeared, leaving Mary in light and silence. The next day, Mary told John and the other disciples about her vision. They were amazed and inspired by her words. John, realizing that her time was approaching, offered to gather all the believers so that they could pray for her and spend her last days together. Mary accepted John's proposal, and the apostles and believers gathered in their home to support her at this important moment. They prayed, sang hymns, and shared memories of the life and teachings of Jesus. Mary, despite her weakness, participated in these prayers and conversations, radiating peace and gratitude. One night, as Mary lay in her room, she was again enveloped in light, and several saints appeared before her, including the prophets and righteous men of old. Among them, she recognized Joseph, her husband, and Elizabeth, her relative. They all smiled and radiated light, symbolizing holiness and grace. Joseph approached Mary and said, Mary, my dear, we are here to support you and lead you to the heavenly abodes. Your life has been full of faith and love, and now it is time for you to join us in eternal glory. Elizabeth added, Your soul will rejoice with us, and you will see your son in his heavenly glory. Fear not, Mary, for the Lord is ready to receive you with open arms. Maria felt her heart fill with joy and peace. She knew that her time on earth was coming to an end, and she was ready to face eternal life with gratitude and faith. Visions of the saints strengthened her spirit and gave her confidence that her passage would be a blessed one. The next day, Mary called all the believers and told them about her visions. She asked them to pray for her and for everyone who continues the work of her son. Mary said, I feel that the Lord is ready to receive me. Pray for me as I always pray for you. May your faith and love always be with you. Everyone who was close to Mary prayed for her, asking God for mercy and blessing. They saw light and peace in her face, which were evidence of her unshakable faith and readiness to meet God. Mary continued to see visions until her last days. She felt the presence of angels and saints who accompanied her along this path. 
Her last days were filled with peace and joy, and her spirit was ready for eternal union with God. These dying visions became a consolation for Mary and confirmation of her faith. She knew that her life was not in vain, and that her Son, Jesus Christ, opened the way to salvation for all mankind. Her soul was ready for eternal rest, and she accepted this transition with gratitude and humility. Thus ended Mary's last days, filled with visions and blessings. Her life of faith and love became an example for all believers, and her passage to eternal life became a symbol of hope and salvation for the whole world. Maria, surrounded by the care and love of her loved ones, felt that her time on earth was coming to an end. Every day her visions became brighter, and her soul was filled with peace and joy. She knew that her son, Jesus Christ, was waiting for her in the heavenly abodes, and she was ready for this transition. The day came when Mary realized that her end was near. She called John and the other disciples who were always nearby and asked them to gather around her. They came filled with awe and love, and Mary began to say, My dear children, my time on earth is coming to an end. I am grateful to each of you for your love and support. Know that my soul will always be with you, and I will pray for you in the heavenly abodes. Disciples and believers surrounded her, holding her hands and praying with her. Mary, despite her weakness, radiated light and peace. She closed her eyes and began to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings, for my Son, and for the faith you have given me. Take me into your arms and grant me peace. At this moment, the room was filled with an extraordinary light and everyone present felt awe in their hearts. The angels about whom Mary had seen visions appeared again, surrounding her with radiance and warmth. They gently lifted her soul, and Maria felt her body leaving the earthly shell. Her soul, surrounded by angels, began to rise to heaven. Mary saw before her bright abodes, where saints and righteous people met her. She felt incredible peace and joy, knowing that her journey was completed, and she was now forever with God and her Son. John and the rest of the disciples, seeing this miraculous event, prayed and thanked God for the gift of faith and for the fact that they were witnesses to such a miracle. They realized that Mary had been taken to heaven to be near her Son and the Lord. After her dormition, the disciples prepared Mary's body for burial. They washed and wrapped her body in clean shrouds and then laid her in a tomb hewn out of the rock. They all prayed and sang hymns, saying goodbye to her and remembering her life and her faith. Several days passed and the disciples decided to visit Mary's tomb to pay homage to her and continue their prayers. However, when they arrived at the tomb, they discovered that the stone that covered the entrance had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Inside, there were only fragrant flowers and light that did not go out. The disciples realized that Mary was taken to heaven and her body did not remain on earth. This miracle strengthened their faith and became a symbol of their eternal union with God. They returned to the other believers, sharing what had happened and praising God's mercy and love. Rumors about the miraculous ascension of Mary spread among Christian communities, inspiring them to further service and preaching. People who heard about this event came to faith and were baptized, finding comfort and hope in these stories. Mary's life, her faith, and her dormition have become an integral part of the Christian tradition. Her example has inspired and continues to inspire millions of believers around the world. Her love for God and her Son, her humility and devotion became the ideal for all who strive for eternal life and unity with God. The dormition of Mary became the culmination of her earthly journey and the beginning of her eternal stay in the heavenly abodes. Her soul, filled with light and love, found peace in the arms of God, and her life became a testimony to the great miracle and mercy of God. When the disciples discovered that Mary's tomb was empty, they were amazed by this miracle. Inside, only fragrant flowers and light remained, which did not fade symbolizing her ascension to heaven. 
They understood that Mary had been taken to God, and this event was a confirmation of her holiness and faithfulness to God's plan. John, Peter, and the other apostles gathered all the believers to tell them about the miracle. Gathered in the upper room, they began to pray and sing hymns, praising God for the mercy shown to Mary. Peter stood up and said, Brothers and sisters, the Lord has shown us a great miracle. Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, was taken into heaven. Her tomb is empty, and her soul dwells with God. May this event strengthen our faith and give us strength to continue serving and preaching. Everyone present was deeply moved by Peter's words. They felt their faith strengthened and saw this miracle as a sign of God's blessing. John, who was always close to Mary, added, Mary was not only the mother of our Lord to us, but the mother of us all. Her love, care, and wisdom will always be with us. May her example inspire us to lives of faith and service. After these words, the disciples decided to leave the tomb open so that all believers could come and see this miracle with their own eyes. Mary's tomb became a place of pilgrimage where people came to pray, ask for her intercession, and find solace in their sorrows. People came from different parts, bringing flowers and lamps with them to express their love and gratitude to Mary. Many of them talked about miracles that happened as a result of their prayers at the tomb. Healings, consolation in grief, and spiritual revival became frequent occurrences among those who came to this holy place. One such case was the healing of a young woman who was suffering from an incurable disease. She came to Mary's tomb, praying and asking for help. After the prayer, she felt an extraordinary warmth and light surrounding her. The next day, she discovered that she was completely healthy. This event was further evidence of the miraculous power associated with Mary. Rumors of miracles spread, and more and more people came to faith, seeing this as confirmation of divine intervention. Mary became a symbol of hope and intercession for all believers, and her tomb continued to attract many pilgrims. The apostles, inspired by this miracle, intensified their efforts to preach and spread the teachings of Jesus Christ. They saw people's faith strengthen and realized that their mission was becoming increasingly important. Peter, John, and other apostles traveled to different cities and countries, carrying the message of resurrection and salvation. The tomb of Mary, which became a place of special veneration, also attracted the attention of Roman authorities and religious leaders. But, despite threats and persecution, believers continued to come here, finding consolation and strength in their faith. Mary, her life and her ascension have become an integral part of the Christian tradition, inspiring generations of believers throughout the centuries. Mary's empty tomb remained a symbol of her eternal presence with God. Her life and ascension were a testament to the greatness of God's plan and the love that transcends all earthly limitations. Believers, coming to her tomb, prayed for her intercession and found consolation in the knowledge that she was always there, ready to help and support in difficult moments. Thus, Mary's empty tomb became not only evidence of her ascension, but also a source of inspiration and consolation for all believers. Her example continued to live in the hearts of people, reminding them of the eternal love and mercy of God, which are available to everyone who believes and follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. Mary's empty tomb, evidence of her ascension, became an important spiritual center for the Christian community. People from all over came here to pay homage to Mary and pray for her intercession. The tomb became a place where believers could find solace, healing, and spiritual rebirth. Years passed, and legends about miracles associated with Mary spread more and more widely. People told stories about how their prayers at the tomb were heard and fulfilled. These stories were passed on from mouth to mouth, inspiring new generations of believers. One of these miracles was the healing of a boy who was blind from birth. His parents, having heard about miracles at the tomb of Mary, took him there with the hope of healing. They prayed all night, asking Mary for intercession. 
At dawn, the boy opened his eyes and saw light for the first time. This incident was another proof of the power of prayer and faith, and many people came to the tomb to express gratitude and respect. Mary has become a symbol of maternal care and love for all believers. Her image became inextricably linked with intercession and mercy. People prayed to her in difficult times, asking for help and protection. With her name on their lips, they found strength and comfort knowing that Maria was always there and ready to help. One of the most important events in the history of the veneration of Mary was the establishment of the Feast of the Assumption. Christians began to celebrate this day, remembering her life, ascension, and miracles associated with her name. The Feast of the Assumption has become one of the most significant in the Christian tradition, symbolizing hope for eternal life and victory over death. Centuries passed, and the Christian Church continued to grow and strengthen. The image of Mary became an integral part of liturgy and worship. Her name was mentioned in prayers and hymns, and her life and examples of her faith served as an inspiration to all believers. Mary also became the patroness of families and mothers. People prayed to her for the protection of their children, for peace and harmony in their homes. Her image adorned altars and icons, reminiscent of her holiness and grace. Believers, turning to her in prayer, felt her care and support. Miracles associated with Mary did not stop. Stories of her apparitions and help continued to inspire people around the world. In every corner of the earth, believers found consolation in her name, feeling her presence and intercession. Mary became a symbol of eternal love and mercy, an example for all who strive for a life of faith and devotion to God. Mary, through her life, ascension, and legacy, became the embodiment of Christian hope and faith. Her image continues to inspire millions of believers around the world, reminding them of the power of prayer, intercession, and mercy. Her life and her miracles have become an integral part of the Christian tradition, evidence of God's great mercy and love, which are available to everyone who believes and follows the teachings of Jesus Christ. Thus, the legacy of Mary lives in the hearts of believers, inspiring them on the path of faith, love, and service. Her examples and miracles remind us that we can always turn to her for help and support, knowing that her motherly love and care is always with us. Mary, ascended into heaven, continues to be with us, helping and guiding us on the path to God and eternal life.